What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I just wanted to show you my modded PlayStation Classic. Now, there are mods out there. There's Bleem Sync, there's Auto Bleem and things like that. And theoretically, on paper, the hardware that comes in the PS Classic from the factory has more power than the Raspberry Pi. But the Raspberry Pi has the backing of literally hundreds of developers and retro gaming on the Pi has come a long way since the very first one was released. And it just happens that the Raspberry Pi can run PlayStation 1 games really, really well. And there's lots of tweaks you can do to make it even run better. You can add shaders, you can add scan lines. There's all kinds of stuff you can do to this. And frankly, I kind of got tired of waiting around for Retro Flag to finish up their PlayStation 1 case. So I picked up an extra PS Classic to go ahead and mod it out. Now the internals of the Classic will still work. It's just not going to be in this case here. And if I wanted to, I could actually put it back in here. No hot glue was used whatsoever in this build. I'm going to show you that in a second. But first, I want to get into a little bit of gameplay here. Now, as you can see, I'm using DualShock 4 controllers or PlayStation 4 controllers, and they're connected to the Raspberry Pi that's inside of here through Bluetooth. I have both of them configured, one player and two player. I could add more if I had more PS4 controllers, but unfortunately, I only have two. The front USBs are functional. I also added a power button with a safe shutdown script, and I have the LED right in place where it needs to be on the PlayStation Classics case. If you can solder, this mod can actually be done in about 20 minutes. It's really easy to do as long as you're using that Raspberry Pi 3A+. You could put a B plus in here, but you're going to need an HDMI extender, and there's just not a lot of room in here. But the A plus does a really good job with most of the stuff I want to run. I just skipped ahead a little bit here. I am using the PCSX rearm core in RetroPie, and I do need to remap this controller because it's a little off. It's really easy to do that though. I didn't even think about it before I started filming. The theme I'm using for RetroPie is Nostalgia. It's available on the ES themes menu. There's a bunch of themes you can choose from if you don't like the look of that one. And that's really one of the big reasons everybody loves the Raspberry Pi and RetroPie. Tons of customizations. So if you're new to the Raspberry Pi, I have a ton of tutorials. If there's something you need to know about the Raspberry Pi and Retro Pi, go to Google, type in ETA Prime, and then the question you want to ask, and 99% of the time, you will find a video from me. Over the years, I've tested a lot of PlayStation 1 games on the Raspberry Pi 2, all the way up to the 3A Plus that I'm running in here. And everything that I've tested runs really well. You might run into a few games that are a bit slow here and there, but there are tweaks you can do inside of RetroPie or RetroArch to get them running at full speed. Real quick, I just wanted to show you the LED and the power button here. It's going to turn the system off, and in about 10 seconds, the LED will go off. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I have this thing set up. Now, if you really want a tutorial, I can make one, but it does require soldering. Like I said, no hot glue was used whatsoever in this build. I did have to use some super glue here and there, but I think it looks pretty good. Now the main reason I use the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus is because the HDMI lines up directly with the HDMI on the PlayStation Classics case. And it fits right in here. Raspberry Pi 3 just won't fit like this. I did have to fabricate a little splitter for these USBs, but they slide right into the PlayStation Classics USB port holders. And they fit pretty snug, so you won't have to use any glue. These were just female USB adapters that I had laying around. I actually bought them from the dollar store. I clipped the ends off and I fabricated a little splitter to go into the single USB port on the A+. I also had to add a female micro USB adapter to send power to the pads on the back of the Pi. I also added an LED and a momentary switch here. The Pi itself is held in by these two screws. The HDMI sits so perfect in here, all I needed were those two standoffs and I just super glued them to the inside of the case. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's actually really simple to set something like this up. If I was you, I wouldn't run out and buy one of these for 50 bucks just to put a pie in it. Eventually, somebody's going to come out with a case that looks just like this, and hopefully it's retro flag. Because in the past, they've come out with some of the best retro style console cases for the pie that I've ever seen. They have the Mega Drive, the SNES, and the NES. And what I've heard through the grapevine is PS1 is next, but we never know how long it's going to be. If you absolutely have to do something like this, I'm going to leave links in the description to everything I use to make this, even the PlayStation Classic. You can get everything on Amazon. 
And if there's a big enough demand, I will do a tutorial video on this. I actually have enough to make one more of these. So if you're interested in seeing a tutorial or learning how to do this, let me know in the comments below. It's actually a fun little weekend project. And if you're good with a soldering iron, you can put this all together in 30 minutes or less. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And like always, thanks for watching.